In this video, I'll show you how to replace a plain grey studio background with something much more exciting. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. Well, I do love shooting in my small home studio, but just occasionally the limited choice of backgrounds can become a problem. But it's not really a problem if you have some basic compositing skills. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a grey background in the studio with a massive wall of sound background. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get some light set. Let's get a model in. Let's get shooting. So it's great to have Ify back into the studio. Ify is going to be the model for this shoot, but he's also a grime artist. And we'll get him to do some performing in just a little bit. That should fit in perfectly with the wall of sound background. Now, when you have a close look at this background, you can see that there is actually some direction to the lighting on it. And I want to try and replicate that in the portrait. You don't have to, but it just adds that touch of realism. The lighting direction is kind of coming from above. Now, I prefer to shoot the backgrounds first because it's easier to change the lighting direction here in the studio than finding a location where the lighting matches what you shot previously. So if I've got light coming from above, that's what I want in the studio. I've got an Evolve 200 on a boom arm. I'm just going to spin that around and pop it just above Ify like so. The background I've got here in the studio for the portrait is just a plain grey paper background. That works fantastically for cutouts because it's a nice, easy, clean background to cut out against. And if I make any little mistakes, grey background, grey final background in the composite, that should work together really well. However, to make life a little bit easier, there's a couple of things I can do in the photography stage. The first one is to think about shadows. Now, there's always going to be shadows in your picture. In this case, the shadows are going to fall down here, away from the area I'm shooting. Because if you think about what would happen with a shadow, there's a shadow behind Ify, and Ify is wearing dark clothes. It's going to be really hard to see where the clothes stop and the shadow starts for the selection. So no shadows is what I want. I can always add them in later. Another thing that I can change later is the depth of field. I actually want now to shoot with a big depth of field, get the whole of Ify in focus. I can always change that later as well. But think about this. If I'm selecting over his shoulders and they're all soft and blurry, well, it's going to be very hard to make that selection. But if they're nice and crisp, it makes making the selection that much easier. So I'm going to shoot at F8 as my aperture. Now remember, I'm using an Olympus Micro Four Thirds camera, which gives you more depth of field than a full frame. If you were shooting with a full frame camera, think about maybe F11 or F16. It's also a good idea to have a look at the background. What sort of focal length lens would have taken that shot? Well, I think it's at the longer end. So I'm going to try and match that with the portraits by shooting them at the long end of my lens. OK, let's take a test shot like this, see how it works. Now, I've already metered this out for F8, so I'll take this shot. Here we go, Ify. And when I do, you can see that Ify is correctly exposed, but the background is a little bit on the dark side. And the reason for that is simply because of the inverse square law. The light is quite close to Ify, which makes the background that much darker. Now, a couple of things we could do to correct that. We could push Ify back towards the background, but then we run into that shadow problem I spoke about before. I could move the light further away, but then that has implications as well. So what I'm going to do is add a second light just for the background. And this is it. It's another Evolve 200. And it is literally going to go right in behind Ify. And its sole job is just to put a wash of light back here to make the background brighter than what Ify is wearing. Not so bright that it actually adds to the picture. There's a fine balance between the two. Let's see how this looks. Ah, that looks great. We can clearly see that the background is a different tone to what Ify is wearing. That again should really help make the selection that much easier. So that's all there is to it with the lighting. Very simple. Now we just need to take some great pictures. So Ify, are you ready? Okay, let's take some pictures. Here we go.
go, that was some great shots there. We've got some brilliant pictures of Iffy. All we need to do is cut him out from this background and add him onto the wall of sound. And I'm gonna do that right now. Making a really good composite image takes time, which we don't really have in this short video. However, this is my quick and simple composite technique. It generally works really well, and it makes use of the illusion of depth of field. So for that, I need to start with the background. Let's have a little look. So this is the background I'm gonna use, my wall of sound. If you want to use exactly the same background, you can download it from my website at gavtrain.com. There's a link in the description below. First thing I'm gonna do is blur it by going to filter and convert to smart filters. Click OK. Now this allows me to change the blurring effect later if it doesn't look quite right. Then I'm gonna go back to filter, down to blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna go for maybe eight to 10 pixels, somewhere in that range. Click OK. Now I need to go and get the picture of Iffy. There was plenty to choose from. I've already edited this one in RAW, so this is the one I'm going to use. I'm just gonna to go to select and all, edit and copy, close that picture down, and choose edit and paste to bring it into the scene. So now he's part of the picture, but obviously I can't see the background because I need to remove the current background. So I'm gonna select that using the quick selection tool. You could either select iffy or select the nice big gray background because that sounds like a lot easier thing to select to me. It's not perfect, I've lost part of his ear. So let's just choose to remove where it went a little bit too far, like so. And I think there's a little bit on the other side I can see as well. So let's try and get that too. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I don't need the best selection in the world, but it does help to start with a pretty good one. Next, I'm gonna click on Select and Mask, which is a feature in Photoshop CC. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, there are other ways of using the masking tools. I'm gonna to use Select and Mask, and then I realize, of course, I've got the selection back to front. But I'm not really worried because I know there is a button here that says invert and that will get my selection the right way round. Now I don't need the best selection but I do need a reasonably good one and things to watch out for are any areas you've missed like this little bit of beard here and halos. So let's start by getting rid of the halo. Now to do this I'm going to use the edge detect which will also help with part of the hair as well. I'm going to put it up maybe three, four, five pixels somewhere in that area. Next, I'm gonna to come to shift pixels or shift edge. I'm gonna shift them in maybe 20%, but no more than that, just so I have a slightly tighter selection. And then finally, the thing that really gets rid of the halo on this image is to turn on decontaminate colors. Works really well with a lot of images. However, if it doesn't work with your image, then do try any of the other sliders because they all have impacts and it will work differently for different pictures. I've also chosen to output just to a new layer. Right, what about this part here? So anything that you've radically missed, you can use the selection tools on the left-hand side. I'm just gonna add into the edge detect area by just using that brush. And we can just paint in like so. Now this, I would normally go around the hair if I was doing a, a real advanced selection, but as I say, we don't need the world's best selection. So maybe just a few areas where there's a halo or two. But other than that, I'm quite happy with that. I'm just gonna click okay and let it do its thing. So I've cut Iffy out and he's on the new background and it looks reasonably convincing, but not very. To really make this work, I need to do the shallow depth of field, not just on the background, but also on Iffy. So his shoulders, his ears, the top of his head, they're all gonna blur into the background. So let's do that by going back to filter. And again, I'm gonna choose the smart filters and click okay. That adds a smart filter and allows me to go back to filter and blur, Gaussian blur. Now, because depth of field becomes more of the further away from the focus point, it's gonna be less on iffy. So let's change it from eight to half. Let's go for four and click okay. Now that blurs all of iffy and I only want the edges blurred. So to make sure that happens, I'm gonna come down to the layers, find the layer mask and click it. Get a little sort of rectangle around it there. And then I'm gonna to go to image, adjustments, and invert, or I could have just pressed Control I, Command I on a Mac. My mask is now the opposite color, it's now black, and I'm gonna get a paintbrush and make sure that my color is the opposite to that, which is obviously white. I've got a really big brush, really big, and then a big soft edged brush, just paint all around the edge of if his shoulders and his arm and his ear, and I'm gonna go around and do the, the top of his head, 
and the other arm and shoulder and so on. Okay, so it's not quick, it's not neat, but it just blends it in really well. To really see what's going on, I need to go in a bit closer. And you can see we've got that shallow depth of field effect on his ear. That looks pretty good. Uh, but you do need to watch out. If his ear was blurry, then surely his jacket would be as well. So let's get a smaller brush and just make sure that those areas are nicely blurred too. There we go. Obviously, time spent here will be rewarded with a better result. But for now, that looks pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that. Anywhere you go wrong, let's just say you go wrong and you accidentally blur an eye completely, simply swap over to the opposite color, in this case black, and I'll bring the sharpness back through. Okay, so that's pretty much done. I can, of course, move Iffy around if I select the Iffy layer and then get the Move tool. We can move him around in the image so we can pop him anywhere we want to go. And with a bit more time, fine-tuning image, adjusting the contrast, there it is. There's my final composite image completed. For more information on how to do composite photography, check out the Adorama Learning Center. And if you've enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment below. And of course, if you want more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do? You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.